is tragedy visits every generation. But the question is, how do we deal with it? But even more importantly is, how do we as Christians, how, how do we respond to it? And I'm not just thinking about the individual tragedies in our lives. I'm thinking about our tragedies in our communities, both near and far. Well, we, we can go to Scripture. Romans 12.15 tells us, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And that seems like a very simplistic answer. But the question always comes up is, is there a purpose in the tragedy, in the crisis that we face today? Does God have a purpose? Is Where is God in this? And as always, whatever our responses to whatever tragedy must be tempered and must be based upon how Jesus answered it in his own day. How did he answer tragedies? And there are two events that occurred in Scripture that are talked about happened sometime after about 32 A.D. And Jesus answers these these tragedies. One of them was that a tower collapsed in Jerusalem and 18 people were killed. Another one happened in the temple court itself and Pilate (laughs) killed a bunch of worshipers that were in the temple. See, Jesus had been teaching thousands of people and he had been teaching them the difference between right and wrong. And how do we, how do we live right and not do the wrong thing? And how do we do it without hypocrisy? And this group of people comes up to him and they tell him and they ask him about this tragedy that's going on in Jerusalem. And we see it in Luke chapter 13, verses one through three. It says that there were some present in that very time who told him about the Galileans who, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So these people these people were in to do the sacrifice. Herod went in, or not Herod, but Pilate went in and killed them and mingled their blood with that sacrifice. And this is how Jesus answered them. He said, do you think that the Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will likewise perish. See, these people wanted to know how Jesus was going to respond to a current event. They wanted to know, like many people will in the days ahead, Where's God in this? Where's God in this? How does he fit into this, everything that's happening? And Jesus Jesus didn't dodge the question, unlike some of our leaders in our political realm will try to dodge a question so they don't have to answer it or they'll, they'll deflect it on something else. He didn't do that. What he did do is he pulled the answer from the tragedy itself. And then he also pulled it from another tragedy that happened before that. And this is what he said in verse 4. He says, or. He says, now, we see that. You see that, you know, these, these Galileans have suffered. But they were no worse believers. They were, they were no more evil than you are. Because you don't repent, you're going to die likewise. He says, or. Those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell. And killed them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? See, Siloam was a was a place, it was a very well known area in Jerusalem, very prosperous part of the city. And the tower was being built, and probably the tower was probably part of the wall system that was protecting it. And it is also rumored that because of Pilate, because of some of his dealings and the way he was, he is was the cause of this tower falling. It wasn't built right. And 18 people died. Now, we don't know how many people lived in Jerusalem. I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. Believe me, I've been crunching the numbers on this virus. It's interesting for me. I, I don't share it with too many people because they're not nerdy like I am. But I've been crunching numbers. 
But you look at what, 18 people. Let's say we don't know how many people lived in Jerusalem in that day. Maybe 100,000 if it was. Doesn't seem like it's very much not a big deal, but it is a big deal. It is a big deal. They still had an impact. And Jesus, in his answer, he's more interested in giving life and hope than pointing the finger at somebody or blaming the innocent victims. See, boldly, he, Jesus pulls from current events. And what he does is he's establishing the kingdom of God in the midst of the collapsing kingdom of man. We need that today. He didn't take advantage of the situation. He didn't take advantage of the tragedy to level blame or to increase his following. He drew from those events. He brings direction. He brings comfort. He brings hope. And he brought healing in a time of need. And see, you and I, we must do the same. We have to do the same. Even in the midst of our own tragedy, even though the tragedy will touch our lives and touch our families, we too must bring comfort and hope. 